You know, I've used Aquabound paddles for over 15 years, and I couldn't be more excited about the new PosiLock ferrule system. It's quick, it's simple, it's bomb proof, and with no metal parts, you'll never deal with rust. Simply choose the feather you want on the paddle, click it together, and you have a solid no wiggle connection. For more information on all of Aquabound's great paddles, visit aquabound.com. There really are a lot of paddles to choose from, but deciding what paddle's best for you doesn't need to be an overwhelming decision. The biggest thing you need to decide is what the paddle's gonna be made of, and that has the biggest impact on its price. The most expensive paddles are carbon fiber paddles. They're light and stiff, which means they're very efficient in turning your power into forward propulsion. Although fiberglass paddles aren't quite as light and stiff as carbon fiber paddles, they still offer good performance. On the other end of the spectrum, the cheapest paddles generally have aluminum shafts and plastic blades. Although these paddles can definitely do the trick, they're heavier and have a lot of flex, which means they're much less efficient. Personally, I think the best overall paddle is one like the Aquabound Raise series, which you can get with either a carbon or fiberglass shaft, and it has plastic blades that are reinforced with either carbon fiber or fiberglass. This reinforcement makes them stiffer and stronger, and then the plastic makes them incredibly durable. So you can knock them off rocks, drop them on the pavement accidentally, and not worry about them. The next thing to decide on is the length of the paddle and the size of the blades that you're gonna choose. And your body type and the type of paddling that you're gonna do will help you decide that. As a general rule, the bigger and stronger you are, the larger the blades you'll be able to comfortably control. With that said, there's more to the decision than that. Shorter paddles with bigger blades promotes a more vertical forward stroke, which suits an active paddling style. Longer paddles with narrower or smaller blades facilitates a lower angle touring stroke, which is great for a long day of paddling. These paddles will often have a soft dihedral shape to the power face, which means the paddles won't catch as much water when you're taking a stroke. This makes for a smoother and less energy consuming stroke. Now once you've decided on the paddle's length and blade size, the last thing you need to look at is the paddle's feather or offset. Feather is the amount of twist between the blades of a paddle, and a paddle can either have a lot of twist or no twist at all. The advantage of using a paddle with twist is that when you're taking a stroke, your top blade is actually slicing through the air, which makes it more efficient when you're paddling in wind. Now on the other hand, a paddle with no twist is more intuitive to use. You also don't have to do as much repetitive wrist motion, which can lead to tendonitis. I personally started with a 90 degree twist, a full twist paddle, and gradually over the years, I moved to a no twist paddle, and I now use a no twist paddle for all the types of paddling that I do. Unless you've done a lot of paddling, it's hard to know what type of twist you're gonna prefer, and that's where Aquabound's new PosiLock barrel system comes in. The two-piece paddle simply comes together, you line it up with the, the degree of feather you want, click it together, and you've got a super solid connection. The great thing is you can change it down the road. 